There's an age-old question in wedding photography and it's what's the best lens to use. As a Fujifilm shooter, I'm just going to tell you which one's the best for me. Hi guys, my name is John Sparkman. I'm a wedding photographer and videographer in Birmingham in the UK. You can find my work at jdsweddings.com. I've used a lot of lenses over my time. I've got a catalogue with uh, probably nearly 40, 50 lenses on the list of all the weddings I've shot over the years. And there's always that age old question of primes versus zooms. Uh, now, what you get with a zoom lens is you get range. You can manually zoom in the lens and you can get the full resolution just closer to your subject. There's a few other uh, advantages of zooming in as well. Or you can use a prime, which is a non-zooming lens, and that will sacrifice the uh, moving elements inside the lens, and it will give you better focus and sharper focus, and that background can get really blurry and bokeh, it's called. Now, having like six, seven, eight lenses at a wedding is pretty impractical. You kind of want to stick to one or two and find the best ones for you. Today, I'm going to just compare my two top end zooms uh, for weddings and tell you which ones I would use where and when and which one to recommend if you could only pick one. So aside from doing weights with these, I have got the uh, the 50 to 140, is it? 50 to 140 f 2.8 stabilized XF zoom lens from Fujifilm. And I also have the 16 to 55 2.8 non-stabilized XF lens from Fujifilm. They're both the Red Badge series, which is their top line. It's like the red ring ones from Canon. I will preface this that all XF lenses are really good quality. They are solidly built as metal and good rubber on them. They are hardy pieces of kit. Uh, it's, it's a long way away from 10 years ago when I was shooting Canon lenses. Not the top line, but the second one down. They were like cheap plastic. It was like this kind of plastic. It's not very nice. These are solid chunky things. Now the 2.8 and the numbers included, uh, you have to sometimes times them one by 1.5 and you'll find that online. That is uh, due to the fact the sensor behind the Fujifilm lineup are crop sensors. They're smaller than uh, what we would call the industry standard full frames, which is a little bit of a bigger sensor. Because we've got a smaller sensor, uh, the numbers we use are comparative. It's a bit of a complicated thing to get your head around, but uh, if we say it's a 16 to 55 times it by 1.5, gives you something in the range of 24 to 70, which you can find on most full frame cameras, a 24 to 70, 2.8. And uh, 50 to 140, rough times 1.5, about 70 to 200. So the lens lengths are bigger, they just have a lower number. It's uh, hard to get your head around. Some people will also say that the aperture, the 2.8, will need to be timed by 1.5. That's incorrect. Uh, so it's 2.5 for a crop sensor camera. Uh, if you put this at 2.8 and you put a full frame camera at 2.8 and you both shot 2.8 lenses, they would let in the same amount of light. What you're thinking of are T-stops, which is what they use in film. Those are matched to be across the entire um, cinema industry line. You put 3.1 and 1 and 3.1 the other, be the same. 2.8 is specific for the sensor size. Uh, the lenses themselves are incredible. Uh, this one I replaced the 18 to 55 stabilized kit lens, which is a really small, tiny little lens. I've only replaced it recently as well. Uh, that was a great lens, but it was let down by the variable aperture in it, where you'd be taking nice photos and you would zoom in and it suddenly go uh, twice as dark. Apart from that, that lens is great. It's a kit lens and you can pick it up for 200 quid. This uh, has that constant range, so no matter if you're at the uh, 16 end or the 55 and you're zoomed in nicely, you'll still get a nice even amount of light, constant amount of light coming in. If you have them together, then you jump onto this one when people are a little bit further away and you can get all the way into that 140 millimeter range and you can use the same settings. So you were at 16, you're now at 140 mil, you're using the same aperture, the same ISO, same shutter speed. Just it's all it is now is a game of how far away you can be. Now which lens is right for you only comes down to your shooting style. Uh, the weddings that I book typically uh, have between about 80 and maybe 150 guests. So what I really want to get across is the actual build of these two, with the exception of IS on this, uh, they are pretty much identical. It is a good purchase regardless. This uh, about 900 quid, this about 700. Uh, and I would recommend just kind of having one on your body at all times during a wedding, have two cameras. Best thing I can say is have two cameras at a wedding. You never know if your one camera is going to fail. As to which lens is best for you, well, it comes down to your shooting style. Are you a photo documentarian 
uh, who likes to stand in the corners and shoot way across the room, you know, 50, 60 foot, and capture the things going on because no one uh, has spotted you. You can, you know, manoeuvre and get in the right light, and you can just stand there and go, chuh, 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 and <laughs> just sweep the room, snapping off shots. If that is you, then you need a 50 to 140, not 70 to 100, 51 to 140. That is a great lens for you, and you can uh, stay at the back, you can just get out of the way. If you like getting a bit more involved, uh, or if you don't mind walking around, if you may be a little bit more of an extrovert, or maybe you just don't care that you can walk around because you're the wedding photographer, you're allowed to walk around, you're <laughs> one of the only people who can walk around throughout the day, then the 16 to 55 is better. You also get that wider reach so you can take a room shot, although it is possible with uh, panoramas and stuff to snap off a series of overlapping shots and stitch them together with the wider end of the big zoom lens. And if you're asking my personal opinion, I have a prime on one body and I have this on the other one. I would snap maybe two and a half thousand photos during a wedding and a uh, thousand from this, a thousand from the prime and then three to four hundred on the big zoom and then a couple of others, creative lenses, that kind of stuff. I specifically don't use the 50 to 140 uh, during prep, uh, during first dance. I will use it during the reception, you know, a bit where they're all having a drink and chatting and stuff. I won't use it during the couple's photos. I won't use it during the group photos. Uh, I may use it during the ceremony, depending on restrictions. I have honestly uh, been to a wedding where I wasn't allowed into the actual venue due to religious um, requirements, let's put it that way. <laughs> so I shot through a window and I shot it with a, um, a long zoomy boy like that and got the shots. I'm shooting on a camera which shoots 24 megapixel pictures. I can shoot with this at the long end and then I can crop in if I need to. Bear in mind the vast majority of these images are going to be online 1600 pixels at the widest, not 6000. If you think that these shots are going to get blown up large, then maybe might be a good investment to get the long zoom, the 50 to 140. Downside to this one as well, it's really flipping heavy sometimes. Now this is, to be fair, lighter than the 7200 2.8. I used to have the white one for Canon. That was up here somewhere, it was bigger, really heavy. It comes with this detachable shoe on the side and you can put that on a tripod or something. Great if you're doing video. But I wouldn't have this uh, on my, my shoulder straps. I would take that off and I would just mount it at the bottom of the camera. Some say that it's going to cause wear and tear on the bayonet. That's metal and that's metal. I don't really think that's a thing. Uh, I always keep the lens hood on because, as you can probably tell, that's battered. And they're both absolutely annihilated, but I keep that on because I don't want the front of my lens to get hit. That will go into walls and everything else, and that is replaceable. Now, the last thing I would say is the IS, or the image stabilization, is sorely missed on that 16 to 55. I would love to have it, especially as I do quite a little bit of video nowadays. Uh, I have shot with the long one, I've shot handheld at 200mm in a dark situation at 3200 ISO in 4K. Uh, 50, 60, 70 foot across a room. Handheld, dead stable. Absolutely perfect. IS, image stabilization on this is great. If you have a, um, an X-T4 or an X-H1 or something that has a stabilizer inside the camera, that would do the job as well. Sadly, I don't have that, but you might be able to run around with this one instead. Now, lastly, for reference, if you are wondering, uh, my selection of primes, I always generally go for either a 35 or a 50 millimeter prime. I try and go to the lowest number possible. I've tried 85 mils, I've tried 135 mils, I've tried 24 mils, I've tried all of them. 35 or 50 is pretty much the standard. Uh, the more telly, so the, the higher the number, 35, 50, 60, 70, you're going to be closer in when you're taking a photo. It's going to, um, you're not going to get as much width or, or the room or the, the scenario, essentially. But you will get that pop where you get that background separation, the blur in the background bokeh. You will get that, and it's a very useful lens. I find 35 is probably more towards what I have shot in the past few years. But 55 or 50 is where I'm going in the future. So which lens is best for you? You let me know in the comments below. I would love to see your opinions. Uh, this doesn't just apply to Fujifilm. You know, every camera kit and every brand makes a 24-70 and a 70-200, a 2.8 variant usually. Uh, so let me know which ones you use at weddings and why. See you in a future video.